Yes, all right, we're back for uh, Back on the Horse, Fishy B Sessions. Fishy B. Ah, yes, and we've got a couple to go through. Every Uh, fucking time. Do you remember the, um, the (laughs) you know, Neighbours? The The TV show. Yeah. Does that mean anything to you? That's Um, that's the the guy who played Carl. uh, I never watched it, really. Uh, All right, that's 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 comedy gold right there, just so you know. Yeah. Show the you know camera. we're recording, right? <laughs> We've yeah. started. All right. Well, I think. Well, that this will this will kind of ties in with that. Okay, it's just like. All right. I think if people see that we're treating their time with contempt, they might like listening more. Oh. I don't think that's how it works naturally. <laughs> no. Usually, uh, usually okay. you want to value so, people's uh, time. No, yeah, this obviously episode that. is all fishy bees. So Far out. Very popular with a our special, stable mates. So, special um, fishy bee. Yeah, and stable mates out there. Um, we are going to have a new, what do we call it, um, segment coming up. So the stable mates, you guys out there, come and uh Come at us with all your questions. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. So we're going to have, you know, Cletus Mail. Cletus Mail. Yeah. Cleme. And uh, yeah, so get in touch with us yep. through that stuff, and we're going to uh, read out your questions live on the potty. Live on the potty, and um, so hit us up, and uh, you can be part of the potty. All right. For this first one, we have got. This could be a bit... <laughs> Controversial? Well, maybe. What are the worst generational differences? Oh, fucking entitlement. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, I'll just come out early. Yeah. Wow. No, fucking yep. entitlement. Yep. yep. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I have far as to go into this. <laughs> maybe maybe someone else speak. I'll do another one. I'll do one. Because <laughs> I've gone early. Yeah. I'll, I'll do one. <laughs> have you but found fuck that... Um, talking to people like just say you're picking up something mm, like a phone just say like some <laughs> someone <laughs> pick up a fucking like phone. just say someone was going to pick up something from my house that i was selling oh. All right, and, yeah and like normally the way we would do that people our age yeah we go knock on the door and say oh g'day i'm here to pick up the toaster I yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> can't afford that a brand new toaster. Yeah, well, well, trading always, post. Yeah, trading post. I don't know if I want to remember read before in the marketplace market secondhand toaster before the internet. Remember, you'd look up stuff on the trading post, and yeah. it'd be like toaster, two slice, VGC, like very, very good condition, yeah. like yes. you know, low low crumb rate, um, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> and, yeah. and and you'd ring up, and you'd ring up, and you'd have to ask some questions about toaster. Yeah. So you go, okay, oh, let's just go here, just um, ring about. Bring about, about the, the toaster. toaster, yeah. So, um, what would you say the condition is? Like you said, VGC. Is that a high VG or is that a like a low, <laughs> closer to a GC? Uh, I don't know uh, if I believe that crumb rate. Can yeah. you elaborate? Yeah. So when you pop it down, um, like how long does it take to pop back up again? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah, so it depends on the setting. Yeah, I thought <laughs> yep, so. Yep, 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 so it's multi. Yep, so it's, yep, it's so multi. Sounds like a standard toaster. Yeah. So it's multi setting. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Um, so you do that and then you decide, oh, yeah. okay, I might come and have a look and then you arrange your time. And, and then, then you, you get, get there and you hate the look of that toaster and yeah, you, you don't buy it. Well, when you get there and you hate the toaster, you can't just go, oh, this is a pit. You just got to go, oh, yeah, yeah, have a look. Yeah. Oh, oh, have a think about turn it around, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah that's a um, good bit it. of kit there. Yeah. yeah. I might have a think about it. Yeah. Um, I've got six more toasters to look at today. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what would, what's the lowest price you go on for this toaster? <laughs> and it, yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, so, but these days... It's is like, is this available? Yeah, <laughs> that thing. Oh, what I'm yeah, saying, the, the point I'm, the long winded point <laughs> I'm trying to make, <laughs> the long winded, long winded in the same is, sentence, is what? that the LWSP, like the long winded scoot a, point. A younger person, so just someone who's twenty or something like that, who was coming to my house to pick up my toaster for sale, instead of just coming up, like I could just be doing anything in the house, yeah. they might. They'd probably text me from the driveway, just saying, "I'm here." I'm here. Yeah, and yeah. then, then I would up the driveway live on TikTok. Yeah, just, like, yeah. just going here. to pick up the toaster. Yeah, let's see what they've got. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't come up to the thing and knock on the door. That exp- and then I'd be the I'd be yeah, the, the asshole. asshole if I don't see my phone in time and they've been waiting there for forty five minutes. Yeah, and they just won't. Well, they won't make the phone call like 
just say you go into Pizza Hut, right, for the um, like the buffet, and you want to know is there bookings. <sighs> They go onto the website yeah. and then try to send it's some sort of. Up a fucking yeah, phone. Just call a restaurant and just say, just "Oh yeah, I got a group of six people coming. You got some. You got a yeah, cool. Like, yeah. just pick up a phone." I, I I think what I can boil it down to. I think I already did that. Misuse, <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really it's pick up a phone no, but it's misuse of asynchronous and synchronous communication. Yeah. Situation like that, you need synchronous communication. Correct. I'm not sending off a text and waiting to see if Correct. the restaurant replies yeah. or to see if the person. That's a real time thing that you need to understanding what the other person wants as well. Yeah, that's a big part of it. Yeah. I was actually refreshed. What the other person wants. I was actually refreshed. Refreshed. I on Saturday morning, I was I can't remember if it was a bog or, or a shower I was doing, <laughs> but in the bathroom because um, the kids have cricket on Saturday morning, so you got to get up early and get all that stuff and get this stuff ready, and then like tell them. Hurry up. Not one more bloody game of the top of the computer. It's, we've got to get going. And then they're like, oh, they're like, and then they're, they're like, oh, it's not, game's not too late. How long have we got? I said, we've got 10 minutes, but by the time I tell you to get ready for the 15th, uh, all that shit. So I was up early. <sighs> and then I finished the bog or the shower, whatever it was, and I'm in the bathroom and the phone rings. <laughs> and it's the guy from the, like, his, I was like, oh, hello, it's got me. And he just goes, oh, it's Ashwin from um, at WCC. And I'm like, uh, from where? Uh, he's like, uh, cricket. Oh, cricket. Cool. Yeah, cricket. Yeah. And he's like, are your fields, are your fields right for play? Because it's been rain the last night. Okay. And that was correct. He should have rung because that was that need. <laughs> he shouldn't have texted. I would be upset if he texted, and then I didn't see it, and now I rock up at the field, and they're not there because I didn't see the text. Yeah, they just. He was correct to make that phone call. Yeah. That's right. And I appreciated it, and I didn't expect it. Oh, I'm glad you appreciated it. I was fine. I answered it in the bathroom, and so I. Your biggest generational differences, He's or worst, are the communication. Syn- I think the synchronous and asynchronous communication at the right time. Right. Like I think just yeah, pick up the phone, hiding behind the technology when you just need to just. That's what I was going to say. The hiding yeah. behind the technology part of it's a, a yeah. big one. Yeah. And that instant gratification where you see. Um, Kids don't know what it's like to wind a window up in a car. Yeah. You just have to work for things. Do you know... Yeah. If you want that window up, you'd have to crank that bitch. But (laughs) at least if the ignition wasn't on, you can still do it. That's right. You could wind the thing up. Yeah. 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 Or down. Or down. Three kids... (laughs) You no. had up and down. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Up and down. Yeah. Do you remember the wind and the bloody handle fall off? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or when it, when you wind it and it doesn't grip. Yeah. And you're like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. And you're turning it. It's just. Doing I think nothing. there's just... pros and cons with every generation, but and I think with technology and some things, you you've got to look at. Um, you know, I think some good things about the current generation is they're going to speak up when something's not quite right oh, via their phone by the yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> they can't yeah but you know i think there's too many i don't know you your entitlement thing's a big one yeah. i think you don't want to elaborate on that no uh, i don't yeah. think i should don't yeah. go on around. <laughs> what do you, what do you think the older generation to I'm us like leave it there. Yeah, I think a so. generation or two mm. above us would think about us though like what's the thing that we do did or do probably That's did really good that would question. piss us off put piss them should off should we ask that and report back probably won't i reckon um, no, i reckon no. political correctness is probably one and safety can like you know when we had babies and we had car seats and stuff i just remember my parents going like when you get so finicky like i remember i think our first car seat we had we got it checked by the person to check that I'd done it. Installed it right. And then yeah. my mum's like, when <laughs> yeah. we drove from Rockhampton to Brisbane, I was breastfeeding you on my like I was holding you in my lap, yeah. breastfeed, and it was fine. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, just obviously people die. Yeah. Just yeah. stick your thumb in a bowl of scotch and stick it on their gums yeah. and run it around. But we wouldn't go back to that. I wouldn't go back to just nursing same, a baby. Yeah. Like when you know the safety statistics, I'd and go all back that. to the scotch on the gum. <laughs> <laughs> Just fuck it. Yeah, I remember being in cars with no seatbelts hmm. at all. Yeah. Why yeah. do buses still not have seatbelts? Some buses. Well, some don't. do, but why is it still another thing? Yeah. Some, yeah. Like, anyway, yeah. yeah. What tragedy is it going to take to change well, that? Is it, is it that? Is it some practicality issue or is it just you're much less likely to die in a bus because it's got so much inertia that it's the one crushing shit not <laughs> yeah. the crushy yeah. you know it's the crusher, <laughs> the crusher. <laughs> you, can still get you have fine. one Ben or, or, or? 
yeah, a generational bit. difference. Yeah, I think the the virtue signalling. You know where they. Mm. You hear this story like, oh, we went to Melbourne Cup and it was just a whole bunch of old racists there. You know, like, <laughs> it's basically saying old people, like, they don't appreciate that you've got 50, 30 or 50 years worth of insight on top of old people. That, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm. look at cigarette smoking. They still do it. For, but, you know. Yeah. Our parents were told cigarettes were good. Yeah, that's right. right? And then, yeah. so now we're like, oh, these old people are idiots smoking. Like, no, that's not what they had there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just... That without actually appreciating the insight that they've had from time. Yeah. Do you, yeah. with Scoot's question before though, do you think the previous generations would look at us and say the exact same thing though? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably one that will be carried through time. Yeah. I think we're soft. Oh, yeah, we're definitely We're pushed. soft compared to, yeah. like, people in the who grew up in the, yeah, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, probably... Do you think 20s, 30s, 40s? Do you think 50s is where it started to turn a bit of a corner in terms of like that post-war yeah. thing where quality of life improved? Like I, I hear my grandma improve, wrote yeah. like memoirs and stuff um, about her life and just reading that, it is it is actual hard work every single day. Mm. Like yeah. no money, mm. 12 kids all like yeah. bathing in the same little piece of water that they had mm. budgeted for that day. Yeah. Riding, like literally riding to school five yeah, miles, miles or whatever yeah, yeah. horseback or, um not yeah. not having like having to look up as a girl the uh, early teenage girl you know having to drop out of school to look after the other siblings because yeah. your parents were working their ass mm. off on physical labor like yeah. complete completely different totally different yeah. I, I feel like that's a bigger a bigger change from then to anyone born post 50s yeah. than it is from 90s to, to, yeah, yeah, 90s yeah, yeah, 90s to 70s, uh, whatever, yeah. you know. Well, my nan, she um, got polio. So mm. she had to grow up with polio. Mm. And just to be that toughness to get through that. Can like, I? And then have kids of her own. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's just. That that's brings up unreal. a topic yeah. that uh, I think really highlighted it for me. I don't, let's not go down a rabbit hole on <laughs> vaccines and all that shit. But, <laughs> no, yeah. but it, th- this topic and lockdowns and stuff that kind of did trigger it for me which is how shocked we were when the government told us that we could not go out yeah like it's it feels like an infringement on our rights and the fact that we had to be vaccinated and all that sort of stuff like whichever way you want on the side of the fence you want to look at that whatever it doesn't matter yeah but the fact that we were all so shocked about it and up in arms that the government can't do it but remember the government made people go to war yeah that's right that you had to go to war to defend this country Yeah. yeah otherwise you get locked up yeah. yeah. Like there is an illusion that we've got freedom, but a government has to control Still. the population yeah, and right. they'll do what needs to be done. Yeah. And I don't think we've ever experienced anything in our lifetime except that COVID thing. That was a little bit of it. Yeah. But imagine bit. that. Just stay home, please. Imagine being told. Watch Netflix. You've got to go to war. <laughs> yeah. That is, that's a completely different magnitude. Yeah, it's quite yeah. different. <laughs> you have to go to war. Here's some guns to yeah. please stay home, watch Netflix for a couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we've experienced, yeah. but we, we have never experienced that kind of yeah. control or lack of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of just get, take it for granted take that granted, oh, yeah. we're free. You can't tell me to do anything. Government can tell you to do shit. Yeah. And because they, their job is to control the people and, you got to do what, you know. There's there's yeah. forces that are far Especially greater than your own will. In this country where we are free and we have mm. so much freedom, like in North Korea, yeah. being yeah. told to stay home from COVID, it's just like yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, three bags full, sir. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. in this country, it's just like fucking I yeah. what? It makes me think of my auntie Edna, who's my nan's older sister. My she nan's passed away. And... Yeah, she'll be 106 in January. That's fucking crazy. And she's in the um in the care center now but she was living at home on her own till she was 104 mm. and then got a bit crook and but she's been in this place now for well, been coming up to two years i guess so um but she went through all those wars mm. all the challenges and that even caught covid in this care center and mm. survived it mm. at 105 and she, yeah that's yeah. just amazing but yeah, she that's tough. she used to tell us stuff um her and nan because our sisters used to tell us stuff of what they did and what they went through. And mm. my grandfather, Sydney, went and fought in um, Papua New Guinea. That's why I went and did the Kokoda Trail in 2004 to honour him. But some of the stories, mm. like, 
I know we talk about it a bit, or I talk about it a bit, but the, the whole life on a pedestal thing, I think that's where we've got to in the last 50 or so years is that we're so, it's so foreign a concept to us that our life is that yeah. we don't have to go to war. Our life is not at risk. We live in a medically safe world, like healthcare, all that sort of stuff. It yeah. just feels so foreign to us that we might have to risk our lives for, for something. Yeah. And whereas back then it was just like, you just, you had to do what you had to that do. People it. made all sorts of sacrifices yeah. mm. for the country, for their family, for mm. and they just had to do it. Yeah. And they wouldn't think twice about, is this going to give me a, a 2% higher chance of dying from some disease you know yeah. like it's just like i'll just fucking do what i have to do to yeah. get through to the next day yeah. and the next day yeah. and we just got no concept of it yeah, yeah. They, they get sent off to warn me like i can't have gluten yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah how do you how would you survive as a vegan in war <laughs> yeah. imagine being a vegan in the war yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's a good place that the world is at like it's quite oh it's the, the fact that we can argue about these little luxuries of things and yeah. all that the fact that we've got to this place where you know the whole first world problem sort of thing like that's right yeah um yeah it's a way it's a way better place but it you know you if you think along those lines how you're thinking well then you, it puts it all into perspective to go well hang on a minute i should, I should get off my pedestal a yeah. bit and not be such a mm. shithead yeah you know yeah, and go well shit, fuck what do my parents or my grandparents go through for that to be now mm. Yeah. Think about yeah. the sort of things you don't. Th- yeah. th- think about. Well, we'll keep going because th- think about the sort of things that we don't do anymore because of some tiny little chance of, say, liability or something like that. Yeah. Like we won't do. Yeah, it's like, you know, you know, there's an event or something. We just we've decided that the the minute chance of some liability is yeah. is more important than yeah. The yeah. Doing something good, mm. yeah, maybe, yeah, that's right, yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, it's all relative, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, m- next one. That was deep. That was good. I um, hope the next one's a fun yeah. one. <laughs> no, well, not really. Um, well, it is. It's for. Tell us yeah. about your first fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the that? worst thing you stuck in your bum? It's <laughs> <laughs> a shampoo bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped. I slipped. <laughs> <laughs> now we are. We are four well-known shit dads. Mm-hmm. Okay. We are, yeah. Yep. We, and we've talked about how we can be shit dads. Now, what about when you're a proud dad? Uh, I've got one that comes to mind immediately. Okay, here you go. You want to go? Yeah. Um, I pr- probably my proudest moment. Um, oh, oh. I don't know. Well, it's a very, very proud moment that oh, comes good. to mind when you say that. Is when, uh, I guess I'll say their names. Um, they don't like their names. Uh, or I'll, I'll say my youngest. And my second youngest, um, they were at vacation care at school. This was a few years ago. So the youngest would have been maybe in prep or grade one or something. I'll say prep maybe. And then yeah. the the the, ne- the one that was with him was being grade two. <laughs> two? <laughs> anyway, so they're at vacation care. And the youngest hadn't yet learned how to wipe his bum when he goes to the toilet. <laughs> so... And same, same as his dad. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to go, um, and I think the teacher wouldn't. Either the teacher wouldn't go with him and help him, or he just didn't want to ask or whatever. And he went to my other son, my grade two son, and said, "His older brother." His older brother, yeah. And said, um, "I need to go to the toilet, but I can't wipe my butt. I don't know what to do." <laughs> and that then my the older son said, "I'll go with you and I'll do it for you." And they, he walked him there. He was a grade two kid. That's great. And yeah. wiped his brother's bum for That's him. Cool. And that was just... That's very <laughs> like, good. I was very, very proud yeah. of him. Yeah. <laughs> They're going <laughs> to hate listening to this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I think oh, I disguised... Yeah. Um, I reckon my proudest moment is with my boy. He's got zero stage fright like i mm. i've got stage fright we often joke about how before a gig i'll have 14 nervous poos <laughs> yeah. but he's got zero stage fright and just seeing him on stage in the school musical like he thrives on it like he looks forward to being on that stage yeah and just smashing it out mm. and enjoying every minute of it yeah that's yep. a big part of it for me and then with my girl just um 
just her nurturing side, like similar thing, just like she came home from school even just today and there was a, a kid who was being bullied and all their friends were running away from her and had no one to play with her and she just took her in and said, yeah. come play with us oh, and that's all that great. kind of stuff yeah. and just yep. that nurturing side, yeah. I reckon that's it for me. <laughs> yeah, I've got... Um... I think the eldest emptied the dishwasher the other day. Oh, and that was that was the moment. <laughs> I was, I was like, wow, <laughs> without, with, you mean without like complaining? Or? No, I had to ask. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, what um, is her... it with dishwashers? <laughs> my, 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 yeah. That's a trigger for my kids. Yeah. The yeah. word dishwasher. Mm. No, my, it was her. She got players player and the coaches player of the year in mm. soccer. Really? And my youngest. The coach was went the double. Coach and the players player. Yeah. 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 Anytime I've coached, I've resisted to give that to the person who got the player's player. Yeah. Like, it's like, I can't give it to... But she must have done well the, to no, get the both. The votes were read out. He didn't know. Oh, so he didn't know who the no. player's player was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And he chose her as well. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, That's good. And my youngest was... Um, same thing. Uh, she was Matilda. She had the main part in the yeah, that's good. school musical. So that was really cool. And, uh, yeah, we watched it a few times. I were able to record it. And we watched it on at home. Yeah, it's mm. shit, they were really good. The no yeah. stage fright thing, it's mm. foreign to me. Like I don't understand it. Like yeah. he like wanting to mm. be in front of a crowd of three hundred people. Yeah, like wanting that. Yeah, um, I get it. I, I, get shit, it. I, <laughs> I shit. I shit myself at that. Yeah, yeah. Benji. What about Benji? Yeah, mine are sport related too. Like, yeah. my son and my daughter both play AFL now. Um, That's great. I guess my proudest moment was yeah, the daughter didn't have the confidence to do it for the first year so she yep. kind of sat there and watched and um only girl on the all boy team and oh, they just yeah. got into it and yep. smashed them got goals and stuff so it was really that's good. brilliant was yeah awesome. yeah great yeah. excellent mm. yeah i think with the brothers one like i just just seeing him help his brother but i always just want i secretly want one of one of the brothers because i've got three boys to get like be getting bullied or something and then the other two to just come and just, just smash the gear. Sort, come in. I don't know yeah. I, I obviously I don't want it to happen but I yeah. just I keep talking to him about that like that's yeah. my, bro, my brother has I don't thing care on what you do you help my your brother, brother has you know? a thing on that with, where he talks to his kid about family first yeah. and, and with the cousins his cousins sorry my my your son's cousins, cousins <laughs> yeah <laughs> they have cousins that go to the same school so yeah. the other side of the family but they go to the same school and they always talk about family first. So if it doesn't matter if you're friends with a kid, if the kid you're friends with is picking on your family member, yeah. you side with your family member. Yeah. And we had an incident where some online bullying was happen happening with our boy and my brother's kids jumped in and just went, nah, just just stopped can it. it. Yeah, yeah, just canned it and rubbed the kid out, just like, nah, family first. So Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, important values to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Next one. Fish bowl. Uh, <laughs> you're going to love this. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, I am guilty of this. And um, it's because I'm not very good. And I don't <laughs> kind of um, remember that. Is it jump shots? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Them. Well, not lately. <laughs> um, putting with a glove on. <laughs> <laughs> no. I I just uh, forget to take go, it you off. You guys go first. Yeah, I sometimes forget to. And it's so. I have. It's I, the, the rules are well. I don't know if it, there's, there's no, no rule. rules. You do it's just. You want. It's like going into the club after the game and not taking your hat off when you order a beer. I don't know if it's like that. Is no. it more just like you, why would you, why would you disadvantage yourself by wearing the glove? Is that? Me go. Well, you're the golfer. <laughs> well, it's about feel. Like, if you've got a glove on, you can't feel the grip as well as if you don't have... Like, if you wear a glove mm. while you're hitting a driver, it's to get a better grip yep. on the club with your leading hand. And when you're putting, it's all about feel. And when you're putting for a really long putt, you should grip the um, putter tighter. Right. For a short putt, you should grip the putter looser. Why don't you ever tell me that? <laughs> yeah, it's just funny to watch you suffer. He <laughs> doesn't want you to win 10 grand. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. Never in doubt. Um, but you can't feel the grip if you're wearing a glove. 
Yeah, it I just forget really to take matter it off. for you. Yeah, I forget hackers. sometimes as well. If, well yeah. like if I was but if I was a hacker like you fuckers, I uh, wouldn't bother. I have off. yeah, that's see, I have this in I actually uh, turn myself in circles about this sometimes about whether I take the glove off because I get this attitude of like I start to forget to take the glove off and I've realized I've got the glove on and I'm like, oh, who cares? I'm not good anyway. I'll just hit it and pretend I don't care and I'll yeah, probably that, hopefully that's go the in. Mentality you anyway, should yeah. And then, but then it's like, no, I should give myself the best chance. I'll take the glove. But then I think if I do that, then I'm probably going to overthink it. And so, yeah, yeah. you don't want to be in this head. It's I'm so okay much at putting. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm not a too. Bad I'm not too bad anymore, am I? At yeah. putting. I bought you a towel that has embroidered on it four putt scoot. Yeah. <laughs> four, five's four too many. <laughs> four is too many. Three is frowned upon in by any decent golfer. But I don't. I'm I don't filthy notice, if I have a three putt. Yeah, I don't notice any difference, glove on or off. Is that because I'm a shit player? Uh, I don't, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yep, okay. That's, well, that's why. Fair enough. All right. Like, um, if you have three parts, you should be angry. Yeah. I like the feeling of the glove in my back pocket, though. Oh, do you? Yeah. I feel like a pro. This is actually another little one, a little tip, if you want. Is this where you pretend to be me? No, that's another one. I'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, so that one. That one, I did it. Stand over the ball. Yeah, as like I, I do that now. I honestly do. I stand over the ball. And I just think, just pretend to be Jiggles now. Like, just... Because I think that's one of the things that I suffer it's with the with nicest golf, thing he's ever said to me. Is, like, <laughs> overthinking all the stuff. Okay, this arm straight, this one, you know, turn the shot, whatever it is. And then you're thinking about too many things, and you just stuff it. And I just, like... Just hit the fucking thing. Because, like, when he hit, when Jiggles hits it, he just looks natural, his swing and stuff. I just go, okay, I just, just pretend to be Jiggles. And then, like, sometimes it works. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Then the other one... Yeah, the... Around Pretty, the same percentage of times as when you don't. Do yeah, that. that's right. Um, so, but yeah, putting the glove in the back pocket, I really like the feel of that. I just, it, I've seen people on TV do it. I feel like I'm a pro who do doing it. That. The yeah. other thing I like to do to get myself just feeling good about myself at golf is if I've just say I've got a Nike ball or a Titleist or something like that, don't just put it on the tee in any fashion. I put it with the Nike logo facing up. So I see that right before I'm hitting right, I'm looking straight shot. and I just think too. yeah right. I'm just do it I'm it. worth it I've made it I I am Nike you know <laughs> you I, I'm ball? sponsored by Nike Where'd they gave that? me this ball where'd you get yeah. that ball from uh, I think I got a bargain lot on like eBay <laughs> so not a seven dollar ball out of the no. sleeve like I'm using but you know just pump yourself up you see that logo yeah. you go that's what Tiger Woods uses I'll tell you when you know you've made it when you pull a seven dollar golf ball out of a sleeve <laughs> and yeah. are confident that yep I should be using this <laughs> yeah. uh, well that leads on to this one do you believe in visualization 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 is that where you just like think about what you're going to do? Is this how people manifest things? I guess. Yeah. I, I would say no, but I guess those two things I just said. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> <way. Yeah. laughs> and I'll tell you something that happened today. We've got quite a spiritual friend and on Facebook, she was saying something like that she manifested something by believing it and all right. that stuff. And in the comments, I put, can you manifest me a steak sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel good. <laughs> was in your old piano teacher, wasn't it? No, she did. <laughs> she did, <laughs> she did mate. Uh, uh, I, I don't. Know. I don't think like something like visualizing that I'm going to win the lotto. I don't think any of that is a thing. Yeah. But I do, I've started probably doing a bit more of that. Okay, I'm just going to hit this like, like more of the relaxing or same if I'm playing yep. drums live and if it's, if I'm a bit nervous about it or something, I just try to put myself in a zone of, I, drum solo. Of, <laughs> yeah, of just, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. It's going to be good. And like, yeah. cause I, I think the overriding factor is confidence in most things that you do if, yeah. of how it's going to be good, whether yeah. it's sport or music or something like that. If you can, trick yourself into being confident i, I think believe that's worth in something. visualizing it uh for focus like yeah. so if i'm having a shot at goal in afl i'll visualize it but Going because, because it narrows my focus yep. and same at golf like if i'm playing a par three i'll visualize where i want the ball yep. ending up on the green and that helps me but it's to narrow in focus i don't believe that i can visualize something and create something like mm. scoot said with the lotto or that girl, things. that poor girl was talking about on Facebook when I made the steak sandwich <laughs> comment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's about narrowing focus. More I than think anything. there's, um, 
uh, I've had a few things with it where they, they teach you to say to think of some objects that are that you might see every day. So if you focus on and visualize in your own head, like a yellow rubber duck. Yep. And then if you focus on that like once a day for a minute or so, then you'll just start seeing them everywhere as well. But it's probably like because actually or yeah. What do you mean? Like yeah. see, actually see real ones or more you... That's like the buying a car thing, right? Where you've... That's a confirmation yeah, yeah, bias. That's right. Yeah. When you've just bought a Triton, that's right. suddenly you start seeing Tritons. You see, yeah. Day. So it's that yeah. similar thing. But then they say to pick an object that you you won't see. Like say a... Like a, a four-leaf clover. Yeah, or a, a bongo drum just sitting somewhere, you know, something uh-huh. like that. Um, and then if that, then you start seeing those like, that you'd... Does that mean you're dreaming? Well, no, no we talked about lucid dreaming. Yeah, I, think I think that's lucid dreaming. Like that, that would happen. That would be a good dream check. Could be. A, yeah, dream check. Um, but I've actually done it once. I was talking to Jason about it last game of golf. Um, I was fishing. And I'd asked him if he'd ever done it. But I was fishing in Leslie Dam on the boat. And it was catching nothing. But I closed my eyes and I visualized the fish coming up and taking the bait on the hook. And at that moment, it, I actually caught a fish. It was I've a spin out. It was probably coincidence. Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was oh, the timing I, was perfect, and I, I saw it happening, that. and I it bloody done happened. That with fishing, where I've been on a houseboat and I've just been sitting there frustrated, not catching anything, and you try to visualise and and it happens, but it is a hundred percent coincidence. Well, but because you, you don't count all the times you've thought that and it hasn't yeah. happened. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I'm just not that kind of person. I'm not a spiritual person in that sense, but I do believe in it for focus. Yeah. So. Benji, you. Know- yeah, look, I'm I'm on the fence because I think if you you're talking more in terms of like okay, visualize that I'm I'm going to achieve this thing or something. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. 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 So like uh, I've made it in business or what like that. I think if it affects the way you interact with other people, then I think it could have a real powerful mm. effect. Yeah. Like yeah. you're not going to. Yeah, visualize a yacht, a twenty foot yacht, and then just twenty. That's quite small. Two hundred foot yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Got me thinking back. It's like Austin Powers yeah, asking for one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna visualize higher. This is shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think if you go, okay, I'm gonna get that that two hundred foot yacht, and you just interact with people like you own the two hundred. Like foot you've already yacht, got it. Yeah. Mm. That's. I mean, that's the whole secret. The thing that they went on. With. About. The secret, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think it's that powerful, but I think if, if you go about your daily business, interact with all the regular people as if you own that 200... Yeah, it's about confidence. will happen. I'm not saying it's, it's going to be good and you're going to end up with the yacht, but I think it will change you. It's probably the same way. thing yeah. I'm talking about even with the golf, where you're visualizing something and it changes your focus and your yep. ability in yep. that moment so you do well. And yep. the same in business. Like if mm. you visualize it and you believe it, Mm. It changes the way you present yourself, all that kind of stuff. I don't think so. confidence has a lot to do with it. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, yeah um, even in that golf thing, it's yeah about confidence. Yeah. Even Scott, when he feels that glove in his back pocket, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, feel like part of you should like be the there. Pros, yeah, yeah. What about affirmations? Then that's another one that's big these days. In, Is that where you just say stuff like "I yeah. am a I, I am, am a great golfer. I, I am a great syphilis. golfer. <laughs> I don't have syphilis." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're testing me on that. You get yeah? Yes, nah, it's not my jam. No, nah. you know I'm. I struggle. I know. Yeah. Well, it's the same yeah. thing, isn't it? It's the same as. It's just another way of visualizing, isn't it? It's, it's giving similar. yourself confidence. Yeah. Focusing on what you're going to do. Like I am going to. I am going to get that yacht. I am going to get that yacht. Yeah. Same thing, isn't it? Isn't similar. It just a, yeah. 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 I think, but the visualization part of it is like Ben said. You you visual, visualize it. I can't even talk tonight. And then. Uh, you act as if it's already happened. Yeah. The affirmation is more about self-worth. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, if you act like it's it's already happened, um, then you let go of how it's going to happen. Yeah. And then we're keeping you up, mate. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, Scott's <laughs> just had a oh, oh, We'll get it. One more. We've got time for one more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, um, what age should you stop playing video games? Oh, I was wondering <laughs> where that was going to go. Um, never. Are why, you, why would you, you think stop? No. Why not? Bit of fun. I yeah. sat down with my boy. My boy is obsessed with Fortnite, and I fucking hate it. Like I hate that game with a passion. Yeah. And yesterday he asked me to come play with him, and I said, "Okay, I'll come play a couple of games with you." He knows I don't like it, but I try to just play with him because it's his passion. Yeah. And it wasn't working for some reason, so we played Rocket League instead, which yeah, is a car game. Yeah. It's soccer. Cars playing but soccer, you isn't use it? 
cars playing oh, soccer. Okay. And we had the best fun. And we were trying to win as many games in a row as we could against these people online and stuff. And I said to him, mate, why would you want me to play Fortnite with you where you know I struggle with it and you know I don't like it? Yeah. Where we've just had so much fun for the last hour playing, playing this. Playing this one, yeah. And I was like, hasn't this been more enjoyable? And he's like, yeah. But he, and it, for him, it's sharing his passion. Like, he loves that game. Yeah. But, nah, why would you stop? Like, yeah. I mean... There's an argument to be made for a 40-year-old man who <laughs> Maybe spends like a video game, hours a week playing a video game. and Yeah. But, I don't know. So you think if, for someone passionate about? his age, like, do you think he'll outgrow Fortnite? I hope or? so. I've been hoping for fucking three years. <laughs> I hate that game. Well, it's what about a professional gamer thing. then? Like, a, who, you know, if so, like you said, if someone's 40 as a professional gamer... Well, we got a guy at work who he's got no kids and but his he loves video games and he pours time into them i don't know it's i think it's why, the same why, why like, is it a lot of people look or? down their nose on people who do gaming i'm not a gamer myself but then i think then we it's socially acceptable for us to watch sport and like that's yeah. weird, isn't it? That they, we just yeah. watch these people yeah. play yeah. this game. It's We've got game. no input into the game. Video, yeah, they've got more. Input. Yeah, like the and and we think that somehow we, game. we've yeah, influenced them. just because they're the Brisbane Broncos. I haven't done anything to make them. <laughs> they're the ones who've done the work. <laughs> the sporting, they're the ones the doing the hit ups. The right, I'm just watching. <laughs> yeah. But that's that's does no one says that's weird. Yeah. Whereas the game, at least they're participating that's in the cool film. That's a very good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I think they, if that's what they, yeah. that's There's what they love doing. There's a lot of people doing. who do look down on it, like that at a certain stage of your life, you should, it's kids stuff. I don't agree. I actually I think it's, it's um, a lot more social than... It's different when we were kids. Than, yeah, than we were or even what people think. Like when I see my kids on games, a lot of it, they're just, they're chatting with their mates yeah. and they're like... I find that really difficult yeah. now because when we were kids... It was get off the Nintendo, get outside and go and fucking play in the dirt. Yeah. And now you have to take into account playing online is part of their social That's interaction they connect, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And if you take them away from it and say, get outside and go ride your bike and shit, like, which I still do, I'd still encourage them to get outside and spend a chunk of the day outside. And shit. But, <laughs> yeah, but you have to take into account you, you are removing them from their social time as well and yeah. like like we at one point we were fighting against Fortnite because Fortnite's insanely addictive like yeah. it's so addictive the way they've made it is yeah. purely addiction very clever and if they? you fall yeah. behind your friends and stuff it's all that shit yeah but at the same time we've had to embrace it a little bit and just know well we don't want him to be an outcast and we don't want him to miss out on talking to those kids and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So There's a bullying just about that goes health, on healthy too. boundaries. The cyber bullying and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. When we were kids, you'd go down the park and the local thugs would just punch you in the face. Yeah. Or you'd take a ciggy out from under their collar. Or the local teacher, <laughs> <laughs> as per the last episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think, yeah. And even um, my youngest has just got Snapchat. Mm. And I don't know. I'm, I'm just those sort of things. I, I don't like Snapchat because it's all gone too. You can't monitor it. But yeah. But with the gaming stuff, I like that it brings. It, it's time for us to do something together as well. Like he loves playing NBA. Yeah. And mm. I'm a weapon at that shit. And yeah. I like <laughs> playing that with yeah. him. Like, and I love that. I, that used to be my thing when i was a teenager and yeah. now it's his thing and yeah i'll sit with my girls and we'll play mario kart on yeah the mario kart's a good social one yeah yeah and my daughter's yeah. playing roblox and yeah no, that's I, one like i'll just i download it on my phone and i'll sit there and do it with her i fucking hate it it's boring, <laughs> but i'll do it i'll spend some time doing it with her just so you know it's time to well, engage with kids, something Benji, she they, they... yeah they're big, they're big gamers yeah i still love it too but i just don't have it i just don't do it anywhere near as much anymore yeah you know, i used to dedicate a lot of time to it but yeah so tommy plays Fortnite with cam yeah he'll play a bit of everything do you find it's addictive he's, he's it hasn't got him i don't think i think i think yeah. he's spread himself a bit yeah out with other options yeah he plays a lot of a lot of different games but yeah 
Whereas mowing simulator. Mowing simulator. <laughs> yeah. Well, the lawn's shit Is there shit a pressure outside. cleaner one, isn't there? There is a pressure cleaner. Yeah, yeah. My kids are playing pressure cleaning yeah, simulator. Yeah, loves that one. There, I've got a it's lot of pressure tonight. cleaning that needs doing. Yeah. Or a lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, one time I was here, poor little um, uh, Lockie shat all over himself. The dog, yeah. Yeah, the dog, yeah. <laughs> a bit queer about who Lockie yeah. is. The old dog, our old dog, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think it's your son who... Wiped your yep, other son's younger bum. son's bum. Mm. Yeah, they're gonna was, hate this. <laughs> but I said oh, I was cleaning up Lockie, but he helped. Yeah, he, he was do great. That. Yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah, he was awesome. I just remembered that. I've just so, found yeah. another flea. Did I start this episode Did with a flea? Be? That's another flea. But they're on you, champ. And I, I got fleas. You do. Don't throw crabs in the. Don't, don't throw toothpicks in the toilet. Because the crabs pole vault. <laughs> anyway uh that's been another fishbowl sessions thanks everyone for joining in and we will see you again very soon uh for some more of these back on the horse antics (laughs) rock and roll Fucking horse. <laughs>